Oh, don't you get saucy now? They had brains, they would be very dangerous. She needs to go and see a psychiatrist today. I think we deserve a foreign trip. You really got to wash him like a hawk. I won't even respond. <laughs> You're very, very silly. You were a bit worried there, weren't you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is Sheerness, or very near Sheerness, on the Isle of Sheppey. It's on that bottom right-hand corner, Kent. Down here, in front of that red car. Hello, Governor. No. Where there's a gap. It's boring, isn't it? Um, we're surprising. Oh, Nina and Dave Finch. Who hopefully won't be here at number 14. They got married in April. It's now the middle of July. It's a, it's a late wedding present. July the Hello. 15th, 2002. Hello. And once again, the ground force swings into action. But this time, it's different. Because this is the last regular ground force that I'll ever do. Thank you very much. Very civil. <laughs> Oh, what a bijou plot. The time has come for me to call it a day, or perhaps I should say two days. Ground force is to carry on, but not with me. A moment of sadness? No. A good point to look back and celebrate the Titchmarsh years. Salute. So, the Finches, their friends and relations, are my last family, and this is my last garden. Over the years, they haven't all been as bad as this. Usually, they're worse. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, gosh. Crumbs. This is precipitous. Crikey. What is this? What is this? <laughs> what can you do with this? Uh, sure. This isn't a garden, it's a skip. <laughs> no, wrong place. <laughs> no, how come we go? Oh, yes, we've seen a few. There's been a lot of water under the bridge since it began all those eons ago. And how did it come about? Here's the man to tell the story. John Thornycroft. It'll be all right when he's been committed. You'd never think it, but he is actually the brains behind the whole thing. Reinforcements are coming. Long ago and far away in the world of television, they wanted a vehicle for Alan Titchmarsh. They also wanted a companion programme in the garden to changing rooms. So they came up with an idea for a pilot and we went to try and do it. Well, it's a quarter to nine on Sunday morning in this part of the Vale of the White Horse. The sun is beginning to rise, the heat is going up, and it's time for me to get up into my umpire's chair where I'll be for most of the day taking this view over the garden wall. The idea was that two families in two neighbouring gardens would compete against each other and against the clock to build some new garden feature. Alan would be there to keep the score and comment on what was going on. As a piece of television, it wasn't without its problems. One of which, was, I suppose, was because we were doing too much in one day. We had two families going flat out to create their features. Uh, we had millions of people rushing about. We had two film crews colliding with each other all the time. We had poor old Alan uh, not quite knowing what his role was at all. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got five minutes to finish your patio and or terrace and get all your plants into place. Five minutes from now. But it did come alive when Alan got down off that umpire's chair and started rushing around, madly helping everybody out. Then we felt we were onto something. There. There's a, there's a drain pipe over there somewhere. We could stick a geranium in it, pinch it from next door. Compost! Two minutes to go. <laughs> the BBC still wanted the series. We had a germ of an idea, but what we wanted was a killer idea. And that killer idea, not mine, 
That killer idea was that somebody would go away and Alan would surprise them with the garden of their dreams. Trouble is he couldn't do it all on his own, so we needed two willing helpers to stand by his side. We wanted them quick, we wanted them cheap, and we wanted them now. Trouble is these two, we found, hadn't on any telly before in their lives. Ignore the camera and off you go. Okay. That's it. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not that bad. Oh, see, we've, got like a, we've got a church pew. That's very <laughs> handy. We're going to have to say a few <laughs> prayers to try and get this garden straightened up. Well, I didn't want to do the screen test. I didn't even want to appear on television. But my daughter, when I first told her I'd been asked, my daughter had a bet with a boy at school who didn't believe her. And I said to her, now Charlotte was only eight, I said to her, how much was the bet for? She said, ten pounds. I was astounded. Oh, she's only eight. And I said to her, how are you going to pay for that? And she went, she folded her arms, she said, Daddy? She said, I don't intend to lose. That's not too bad. It's been dug over. There's not much weed or anything like that. Do you use your washing line? Yes, I do. You do. Okay. When I did the screen test, I have to say, I didn't really know what was going on. It was a day off work. Yeah, there's two basic types. One's a, a rotary line that collapses and you can... Looking at Tommy first from the screen test, he looked a bit clean, a bit freshly washed, hair was a bit wet, but he looked like he knew what he was doing, he wanted to be on telly, we could certainly work with this man. Charlie I knew was going to be perfect for this, but the trouble is it didn't show. Her uh, hair was tied back, she looked like a librarian, she shuffled about, she avoided her eyeline from the camera, but at one key moment she laughed she threw her arms around, <laughs> and I thought, yes, I have got to get this girl in the show. I'm going to get and hide now. <laughs> so we had a team together, of sorts. We had an idea for a series. So we had to make one programme to really prove to ourselves and everyone else that this could work. Was I nervous? Extremely nervous. Now, I'm not a person who actually shows my nerves or my emotions very easily, but I can remember two weeks before we actually started filming... I had great difficulty sleeping. How long have you been here, Bill? Well, Our first effort like was in you, West Wickham, Kent. It was to be a surprise for Norma Woodham and organised with the collusion of our husband, I mean, Bill. All I can see is, uh, we've got a pink Alan was, as always, spot on. But Tommy and Charlie looked like a couple of lost tourists. Charlie was almost hiding from the camera. There's a nice cherry at the bottom. John Thornycroft said to me, you're doing the garden, and I said... Sorry, what do you mean I'm doing the garden? And what then when I turned up and we says? started filming, we were just being told to go here, yep. do that, and act naturally. That's very difficult to act naturally. So what do you think is what we've got, Charlie? What's down there? There's a nice mahonia down here, which would be good. It's a shame it's right in the corner, though. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what, Charlie, what about this stuff we've got down there? What do you think to what's there? Do you want to keep any of it? Oh, uh, the mahonia is really nice. Maybe train that up a bit. It's a bit sort of... Firework shape. What have we got down there that's worth keeping? Well, there's quite a nice mahonia down here. It's quite big. Can someone help me, please? I need someone to help with the tape. Okay, but when Charlie one, stopped talking about the, the thing and started doing something about that mahonia, then she seemed perfectly comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they call togetherness in gardening. And with a sledgehammer to swing, she was right at home. In fact, once they got working, it started to come together. It's as if they've been doing this together for years. I think I've just found out where he puts everything that dies. Charlie, you come and give us a whack and I'll lift it up. Something clicked. It was uncanny. As if from nowhere, all the familiar elements just appeared. Harder. Harder. <laughs> the banter. Whoa. It's almost professional. Yeah. Mind you don't trip over those slaps. <laughs> The cocker. Oh, poo! <laughs> I've taken an inch off one I shouldn't have taken an inch. Now look, it's. 12, there was the time 21, check, the nagging. Twenty-nine seconds. Don't, don't remind me of the time. Don't, don't. And as the time ran so out, even a mad door. panic. Comes in the I hate to worry you guys. Yes. She's going to be here in ten minutes. Ten? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I'm <look> so glad. <laughs> Nobody ever tried this before, going to someone's garden, turning it into something else and then springing it on them as they walked through the back door. And we knew Norma was a fairly formidable person. It was a heart-stopping moment. How would she react? Look at all the shopping. Hi, Helen. Hello. 
got a little something that uh, to show you. Why didn't you come back from Croydon? Oh, well, because I got Going stuck. Now look, you know, you've always said to me you want to say it done with the garden. Yeah. We've done something with the garden. Come and have a look. We weren't expecting we we that reaction. We, we nearly had to call a doctor. So we... <laughs> <laughs> you see, he won't have to mow it. All he has to do occasionally is dust off his flag <laughs> There's a bit of water for the dog to drink. And we were told you said that you like to do your ironing in the garden. Yeah, so we've got your little ironing house down the bottom. <laughs> Tell me you're crying because you like it, not because it's horrible and you want it put back. <laughs> <laughs> so you see what we've done down here. Well, it did work. It worked in spades, better than we'd hoped. And from then on, we knew we were on to a winner. Have that lot anywhere near yet? Sixty-five programmes later, and we're here on the Isle of Sheppey. Time for the ground force to advance. Come in, here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so and so. It's not very big, is it? Just touch that fence, Tommy, over there. Oh, you don't need nice, four of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small garden. So, in fact, as I was aware of this, I've done a small plan. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. So you come out of the, the French doors over yeah, there, and you've got a little terrace there, a little patio in, in York Stone there. And then you've got a little tiny weenie lawn in the middle, and then another patio mirroring that one at that end. And it's absolutely stuffed full of flowers, so it's like a little tiny cottage garden. I, it's amazing. I just can't believe that you can do all that in something this small. It's just amazing. To tell you the truth, Joe, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd just like to tease. Oh, <laughs> well, it's that now is... July, April, oh. May, so we're three months late with their wedding present. Yes, yes, So yes. we, we apologise for oh, that. But don't we worry. Do, we do have some footage courtesy of you of them getting married, their wedding. What would we do without home videos? Back when we started, it was so much easier. No one had heard of Ground Force. So you could go right up to the unsuspecting surprisee and ask them straight what they wanted in their garden. For our garden, I do feel I wanted to, I wanted to be an extension of, of what we see behind us, and so it just sort of will blend into one. But after the first series, we had to resort to ever more obscure ways of getting a look at the victim. Ask them strange questions to throw them off the scent. So how, when was the last time you felt yourself in the shower? <laughs> um, no, actually, I do that quite regularly, he says, without laughing. How do you feel about customers who get fresh with you? Uh, to be quite honest, they try it on, but they don't get very far, so... And what's it like being surrounded by all these lovely ladies? Here? Well, there's two sides oh, to that. <laughs> and what sort of things do you want to buy in the middle of the night? Food to keep me awake, really. How long have you, how long have you been walking? Oh, ever since I was born. <laughs> they say I would laugh if my ass was alive. <laughs> yes, well... Time to get cracking in the Sheppey Garden. This way, Zoe. Now, you wrote in, didn't you? Yes. And why did you write in? Um, well, a few reasons, really. Um, Nina's been... I've known her for 19 years. Oh, OK. Since I was four, so um, she's got... Her and Dave have got parents to my two children. Okay. And it is just my little way of, you know, giving her a wedding present. Is so. she going to be surprised? Oh, definitely. She's got no idea. No. Nope. And Dave, husband? Nope, he hasn't got any idea either. So. I hear she's got a bit of a crush on a young man. <laughs> and it's not Tommy. <laughs> or Will. It's that other young man. I'm such a creep, aren't I? <laughs> You'll yeah, be very good at it. <laughs> what other young man? <laughs> She's going to be really embarrassed about that now. The nation now knows she's got a crush on Alan. <laughs> she can get medication for that. I'll have you know, <laughs> it's not a first. There was a certain lady in Oxford, she was a rock garden. The one with the really sort of thick glasses. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing that's changed. They used to be so nice and polite. Share it with them later. OK, stop. <laughs> 
faffing around with your paintbrushes and paintbox and come and do something. Faffing around? <laughs> we could put the other post in. Put the in. other post in and make it easier for Alan, or we could not and make it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll put it in. I'm only joking. Oh, which will they do? <laughs> Fisherman's friend, isn't it? I'll have you know, I'm the second sexiest man on television after George Clooney. <laughs> Don't lean on them too hard. I could float well. if I were a fairy. Don't say anything. Did you just drop your wallet, Alan? No, it's here, innit? I really hope he gets a splinter. I wish I'd heard that. Here, Alan. What? Oh, thank you. Oh, you see, I do things by eye. Oh, God. <laughs> an optician lately. <laughs> I know. I know it's sloping. How else are they going to shed the rain? Oh, that's a good one. Ding! All we need now is a fairy. Don't <laughs> say anything! You just want me to look as stupid as you do, Woody Woodpecker. And we're going to have planks. What are you doing? Well, I thought we could do this. Well, I thought we could do this. <laughs> I thought we could do this. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm out of here. <laughs> and it's not for... You'd think for me last programme they'd give it a rest. Well, be careful, Alan. You don't know what it might catch. <laughs> I've always found the kindness of strangers more reliable. On the Isle of Sheppey, they're certainly looking after oh, us. Oh, wow! Oh, my goodness me! Go over the fence. Mm. Oh, lovely. Well, thank your mum, Becky. I can't think now. You can't talk now. His dentures are stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but people always seem to think we need feeding up. Jim. You're here again. How comes whenever someone brings up one of these cream teas, you're always around? Excuse me. Okay, lunch is up. There's Tommy. Oh, don't worry about him. He's around oh, the corner. No, he's Tommy, oh, no, he needs to dinner. see her. He needs to <laughs> dinner too. Can you hear that? Oh, oh my goodness. That. It's just a quiche. Well, it's a whole quiche. This isn't fair. <laughs> it was because they feel sorry for him. It's not because I shout at everybody, nobody loves me, and I get four quiches to share. You need seven of them. It's a bit small, isn't it? I know I'm on a diet, but bloody hell. <laughs> it's just for you. Don't eat it all at once. <laughs> Bet you can't fit it in sideways. I beg your pardon? <laughs> She says that to all the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you think that's funny. <laughs> Madonna. <laughs> Tommy Walsh. <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm glad this is not going to be shown. Tommy Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the subject of misconceptions, there's another one about which I'd like to put the record straight. People seem to have got it stuck in their minds that on ground force, everything gets painted blue. Why do you always choose blue? I mean, is it your... I don't always choose blue. We've done, we've done 49 gardens. We've only had about, literally, we've had about four of them, five of them using blue. That's all. Are you sure? It's not a criticism, Alan, actually. It's just... It's just a... beginning to sound like one. They've been using this lemon orange for the last 50 years. <laughs> I'm sure a few blue gardens are going to go on this. Any chance of getting that painted blue? Because that's what our team must have done. Pleasant blue. No, blue. blue. Done blue too often. No, you're green, I'm afraid. Not blue. Uh, no. What? That's horrible colour. It may look horrible in the tin. When it goes on, it's daffodil. Just be careful in this one. So you're going to paint the shed? Shed? <laughs> Gazebo? Oh. Come somewhere else, yes. Right. 
Uprights brown. Yeah. Roof blue, floor brown. Yeah. Tommy? Well, I think cross members and the roof structure above should be blue. Yep. The post should be brown. Yep. And the floor should be blue for continuity with the fence. Too much blue. The side panels will be blue. So the roof needs to be blue, the uprights brown, the floor brown, and the side panels blue. <laughs> brown? <laughs> well, brown is a cross between blue and brown. <laughs> All right, what about the handrails? Handrails blue. So have you got that? Roof blue, uprights brown, floor brown, blue <laughs> flu, free flan, flan blob, flea blah blob. A blob blob, a flea blah blah. At least for my last garden, well, morning, I've come up with a Hello, new Mr. colour. Bush. Grey, is that the colour going to be then? It's not quite how Alan described it. What did Alan call it? He called it mellow stone. Mellow stoned? Mm. I think he must be, actually. <laughs> Every garden we've done is special, but some are more special than others. The first time Grand Force departed for foreign shores was in autumn 1999, when we went to make a garden for one of the world's greatest statesmen. For many, he was the man of the millennium, and Grand Force took off to pay him tribute. The difficult thing about this particular programme is that I'm having to do quite a bit of research because this gun is for someone a bit special. moments in your life where you really do have to pinch yourself to convince yourself that something is happening. This is the Transkei in South Africa. This is Nelson Mandela's drive and I'm walking down it to meet his head gardener. You must be he, Zet. Oh, how are you? Zet. I'm Alan. Are you Alan? Yes. Oh, OK, fine. Good to nice see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> this, is, this is incredible thrill. Yeah. I'm, I'm just about to have a nervous breakdown, I think, because I don't know whether I should have done this or not. <laughs> But once we got to work, those first nerves were forgotten. There were so many other things to think about. Everything was so different from what we were used to, not least the plants. Rich. <laughs> I've never planted a cactus outdoors in my life. Isn't it nice to have a first at 50? Oops, you didn't hear that. We usually get help from the friends and neighbours, but not often from a village chief. But some things, it seems, are always the same. Just when we didn't want it, ground force weather. Great load of rain blowing over. Wonderful for grouting, of course. Grouting this, you get little cement patches all over your slate. Luckily, it was only a passing shower and the garden was finished on time. Car's come down the road. Oh, is that him? Wish us luck. As zero hour approached, the nerves were even more jangly than usual. Waiting for Mrs Figgis to come back is one thing. Waiting for ex-president Nelson Mandela to return is quite another. The lady of the house is here. Yes, no, she was part of the conspiracy. She was part of the conspiracy? Of course. That's Alan from the BBC. Good to see you. Oh, very nice to see you. We've got oh, a nice. little surprise here for you. Yes? This is, this is, this is Tommy. The I know to sir. This is Charlie. <laughs> yes, how are you? Well, we heard you've got a new house. Oh, oh very nice. <laughs> oh. This is beautiful, man, huh? Yeah. When did you do this? <laughs> the last three days. <laughs> no, this is beautiful. Yeah. I must thank you again. You know? It's my pleasure. Oh. Absolutely yeah. lovely. We put the family millstone at the end. You remember that? Oh, yes, good one. <laughs> That's yes, uh, the old ladies. Uh, but then, when he saw the garden, the nerves went. 
he really seemed to like it. This is absolutely beautiful, no? I was reading in your autobiography that gardening was clearly very important to you when you were in prison. Oh, that's true. I'm essentially a country boy who was very happy to see uh, a blade of grass, the leaf of a tree. And uh, so it's very difficult to, to take that out of me. Update on the Isle of Sheppey, we're still painting. It's a bit worrying, you know. Why is that? This is our 66th ground force, and this is the sixth programme in series nine, 666. Shall we stop now? Well, the sun's shining, that's what's worrying me. <laughs> well, we're just not used to it. You know where you are with proper ground force weather. Tomorrow, in front of the medieval gazebo, with its summer flowers, there'll be a pool full of water lilies, and here, a croquet lawn with people gently tapping balls. Balls. Don't try this at home, not when it's hailing. Glad you got this up, Jack. Oh. Stop going for a bafter and come in here. Is it just a passing shower? I hope so. You all right, Willie? Yeah, this is lovely soft weather. Soft? Yeah. <laughs> I must be soft to be working, isn't it? In Ballymoney, it will be sunny. In Blagardy, it will be showery. And in Alloa, it will be absolutely pissing down. <laughs> I don't know why people don't just call us in when they've got droughts, cos look what happens when we come, it can rain anywhere. Sahara Desert, you want it greening up? Call in the ground force, Steve. We'll sort it out for you. Thank you! <laughs> it's all right, Deputy Ahab! <laughs> I think I've seen him! The worst, by far, had to be North Wales in Anglesey. Anglesey was bad. I've never come across two days like I've spent in Anglesey. I wish to make a statement here. This is the 49th programme we've made, and it's the worst weather ever. Ever, 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 ever. Right. Thank you. This is like a quagmire. You wouldn't put a milk bottle out in this weather, you wouldn't. Did you hear that? You wouldn't put a milk bottle out in this weather, according to Willie. Ladies and gentlemen, Ground Mud. The weekly programme for twits. I think we deserve a foreign trip. Hawaii or somewhere. Up the Bahamas on The Bahamas is nice, it's very nice this time of year. I didn't agree to this when I joined. It's that wet. Even the concrete blocks are floating around here. Look. Have a look at this. Just have a quick butcher's look. You hear what Alan said? Oh, my. He said, try not to get any muddy footsteps on the deck. <laughs> Perhaps it's some kind of heavenly recompense that for my final shoot on the Isle of Sheppey, the sun is blazing down. But heat can be bad for the concentration. Some people's minds begin to wonder. 
Well, get on with something then. No, I'm in no hurry. <laughs> Just watching you walk for a change. <laughs> Ooh! It's the last time I run a wheelbarrow for you. <laughs> a lot of people seem to like watching Charlie at work. In fact, it's almost become a national obsession. She scrubs. Sweet, isn't it? <laughs> Where else would you find somebody who did that? What a wonder. That slow. <laughs> Come right up to it. <laughs> I just did that to be annoying. <laughs> For the second Grand Force special, we again flew off to warmer climes, but not to the south this time, instead, to the east to a land of heat and dust, romance and mystery. I was looking forward to going to India because I've been there before and I just find it such an atmospheric place. There's such a huge culture there and it's so different from ours, and you just cannot help but people watch and enjoy the surroundings. I mean, it is such a stunning place. But we went to India to make a garden for the Palna Children's Home. It's one of many centres run by the Delhi Council for Child Welfare. Outside the gate, there's a crib where desperate mothers can leave their babies, safe in the knowledge that they'll be taken in and cared for. They'd always wanted a garden, but their resources were stretched to cover other priorities. So that's where we came in. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> like Wembley. It's the size of three football pitches, this is. It was a big space, and to make two play tunnels and a walk-in water feature, we'd ordered concrete pipes. But how to get them off the lorry with no hoist? This is all a bit scary. Why not stop before New Delhi? The Viceroy's house goes, we're finished. <laughs> Move for you. What I think they're trying for here is a half somersault, the big one coming off, running up here, bouncing up there, and stacking it on the top. You think I'm joking? Am I not being? Of 
I got invited to walk round the orphanage, which was really humbling to see all the children of various ages. It really took your breath away. A lot of these children um, oh, they look have health problems, yeah. And do you adopt all your children out fairly quickly? 50% of the babies, because if there's an Indian family, the child's in good health, mm -hmm. and an Indian family is willing to take the child, then it's about two and a half months. Right. But 50% of them, we need to keep them and build them up and, yeah. <laughs> so, Very She's going to be Italian. <laughs> yeah. So this is the toddler's wing, the nine right. months to two years. Hello. So this here is uh, actually Hello. she does not have legs, uh, right. and her mother uh, left a note for her which we put on her file. We've got a little uh, walker for her, and so she walks. We're trying to find a family. We've sent oh, out sorry. a referral to all the all the organisations we work with, the mm. international organisations. But oh, she's a lovely baby. Yeah. Akshira. Akshira, either. Walker ka iska? Hello. Hello. So she uses her walker and her mother left a note for her and left some money also. Uh, a oh, little money. So that was. So yeah. Oh, Saying she couldn't look after her. Nice. Oh, how many fingers? <laughs> the big smile. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Back and do some work. <laughs> Hello. I have a slight little problem. Mm -hmm. The tunnel water feature, I knew what I wanted to create and Alan had drawn it. But drawing it and creating it don't quite go together. The pipes across, I yeah. can't concrete them in. You can't? No, I'm worried that children are going to swing on them yeah. and they'll pull out yeah. and it'll be very difficult anyhow. Yeah. It was a total rush to finish the water feature. Got the pumps in, got everything finished, but what's the water going to come out of? I'm still not sure whether we're having a bar straight across, coming down, diagonally, or what. So in the end, someone was sent down to the plumbing shop just to get shower jets. Charlie's ingenuity paid off when the garden was finished and opened to the assembled crowd. Everyone loved the garden. And you've got to run through that. But they wanted to have a go on that water feature. Lovely. This is called the terror run. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> Never! Oh, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> it works. <laughs> Doing the end reveal, it was fantastic to see the children using the water features. They just loved getting drenched, and it's that noise when they scream and get wet. They know they're going to get wet because they can see it, but it's that children's scream when they run through and get wet. It just makes you smile. <laughs> On Ground Force, we've certainly been to some extraordinary places and the Isle of Sheppey. Don't worry, all this is not for us. The garden is a lot smaller than we originally thought, so we're going to just take off some of these. There is originally nine pallets, we're only taking off six. Thank God. Even that, I think, is too many. Now there's something that's changed over the years. Willie, and I don't just mean his hairstyle. Used to be a dentist. He first started to appear in the second series in the background, rarely speaking, the king of the mix. Since then, he's gone from strength to strength. It's five o'clock now, you know. Not recommended starting paving this all the day. Willie, yeah? do you know Pythagoras' theorem? No, I never met him, Ellen. Met his brother one time. Willie, you know the small bit goes next to the wall? Why? Well, because that's the way it's designed, you see. You should not change around your design, no? Not really, no. <laughs> you see, it points up the importance of a job being properly managed. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wish you'd managed me a bit earlier. Willie, I 
tell you what we can do is just try the two panels without the half one. Is that all right, Alan? This is where the end of the thing has got to be, yeah? No, it's going to come out further than that. Be a post in, in between. No, 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 no. no this is no, just rubbish. This is not no. the part, this is. No, it is. No, Let's it is. go back to your original plan, Alan, eh? <laughs> we put yes. this one in towards the wall. Yes. I'll dig another hole. Yes. And we'll all be happy. Yes. On the bottom. <laughs> Is it resolved, Woody? Dig another hole. Back to plan here. Design of that time. Could do with having a stiff one off of Willy, actually. Yeah, is it going to be sloppy? Do you want to ask you for one now? Yeah, tell him right. Tommy wants a stiff one. <laughs> See what I come back with. Maybe we better rephrase that. He says, of course you can have a stiff one, but you won't get it from him. <laughs> They'll never show that bit on the telly. Actually, looking back through the archive, there are quite a few bits that never made it to transmission. I've just been handed a rolling pin. The director off-camera hands you a rolling pin. And you have to think of something amusing to say. Or do with it. I reckon with a following wind and plenty of pressure from my bicep, I could probably get it in up to there. That's Get not... away. Two things I'll never try. Morris dancing and buggery. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alan said to me yesterday... I was down there cleaning out the muck and I said, you don't normally let me come in your hole. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just said, screwing these on, I really need to touch up my balls. <laughs> so there you are. A delicious... Come on, give, me, give me your... Oh, you're spirit. joking. You're joking. <laughs> See? Oh, all right. No, I'll come off. I'll give you a hand. Well, I'm standing. Linford Christie looks small. <laughs> <laughs> Can't use that. You've got to cut that. I've got enough trouble with Gerald now. Cut! <laughs> Get back on there. <laughs> I wonder where that's going to end up. I wonder. <laughs> right. Linford Christie. Are we there, OK? <laughs> Right. Uh, uh, I see you brought your lunch with you. <laughs> <laughs> Cut him out. I don't want to stand this end. <laughs> oh, that would you stand in there? <laughs> it just makes me eyes water, actually. <laughs> and it's not the weight. Oh. It's the prospect. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a lady here yesterday who said she had plenty of stone in the back garden and we could have some of that. If we want it, in the next oh. village. In return for sexual favours. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Walsh has a fit of the giggles. <laughs> this generally holds filming up for about <laughs> 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah, they've got a special sort of gel in them that stops all the uh, effect. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Right. <clears throat> These have... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's the jelly that's came to me. <laughs> right. Right, here we go. <clears throat> right, Alan, you must wear these gloves. Is there a new <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice. Yeah, um, right. Not right. <laughs> these are <laughs> the type of gloves. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh! Come over here. <laughs> Come here. Oh. Come here. <laughs> Walk past the boom. And stand here. And tell me why you're laughing. <laughs> oh, I'll tell him. Because the gentleman next to me is flies. Flies are undone. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Oh, soldier, soldier, won't, won't you marry me with, with your musket, fife and drum? Oh, no, oh, sweet maid, I cannot marry ye, for I have a wife of me own. Right. Mm -hmm. They just filmed all that. <laughs> I was just giving her a peck and telling her she was doing very well and it would be good for her to cool down. Honest, dear. <laughs> it wasn't my idea, it was his. It's never your idea, is it? I'm not that intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we'll let British Rail have the last word. <laughs> I remember when you had small tits.
See what I've got? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just down here then. Can we go again on the way? <laughs> yeah. Would you like to see me nuts? <laughs> <laughs> it's a gamble, isn't it? Should I have a peek? It would be nice to get rid of it. It'd be nice to get rid of that phone. It'd be nice to get rid of the person who owns it. Who isn't actually it doesn't actually exist. As far as you're concerned. They're crouching over here. Have Pretending you have a look. Look. <laughs> You know, when we're presenting this programme, we leave our mobile phones in a distant place and turn them off. I mean, we need work, we need jobs. We like them to ring, we have to turn them off. Everybody else around here, it's like bloody Blackpool. <laughs> Pleasure Beach, there's tunes coming out of every orifice. <laughs> trying to work, I'm a designer, an artist. <laughs> Where are we going to hide? I don't, don't know where we're going to hide. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> the next time Ground Force ventured overseas, it was to do something for a group of old soldiers, veterans of two world wars. They fought for Britain, though they came from an island far, far away. An island in the sun. Until 1962, Jamaica was a British colony. Of the many thousands who volunteered for the Commonwealth forces, there are now but a few left. Some live in the Curfew retirement home. Men like Chester Armstrong. So what did you do during the war? Well, I was in the Royal Air Force, you know. A ground crew, general duties. Where were you stationed? Biggin Hill, that's in Kent. Kenton. Very famous place, Biggin Hill. You know yeah. Biggin Hill? Yeah. It's a nice place, yes. A lot of excitement and experience, you know, mm. but what came out of it, thank God I'm alive. You know. <laughs> Just a couple of hundred yards away, in the direction of the setting sun, is the final resting place of the residents of the Curfew home. Names on the headstones like Walter White, Vincent Campbell, Arthur Beckford, all terribly British. It's very easy to forget that people of all colours from members of the Commonwealth countries laid down their lives for king and country. The going down of the sun and in the morning we'll make a garden for them. The garden in Jamaica was to be another big one. Just as well we had some enthusiastic helpers and plenty of encouragement from the residents of the Curfee home. This is a funny place. Funny place. Funny place. You don't get rain here. Just a minute, what's this that's falling out of the sky now then? You don't call it rain. <laughs> no, I don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> you can't bear with what we call rain. No, it isn't at the moment. I don't believe it, it must be 95 degrees. Spread a nice bit of finished concrete. Typical ground force. They started to rain and look what's turned to concrete. The light of CD clock is not dark, so it's not going to rain for long. I'll hold you to that. Yeah, man. I know this. Yeah, man. I like when it's raining in England, you know. When it starts to rain, it just, it just fall. <laughs> fall, fall, fall for one week. Yeah. Uh, this is, we call it dew. Dew. <laughs> dew, I'll tell Tommy that, it's dew. <laughs> dew, not rain. <laughs> we didn't need this. It's raining. It makes the plants look pretty. The rain passed on, and when the time came to open the garden, there was no shortage of tropical warmth. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the reason we've got you all here, apart from your meeting, is that we've made a garden for the Curfew home. A good view from here. There's a nice little breeze down here as well. Um, no, we need a fan. <laughs> oh, you want an umbrella and a fan? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah the but the scenery is beautiful. The scenery is better here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Among the veterans, Jamaica's oldest soldier. At 107 years old, Eugent Clark is one of the dwindling band who fought in the First World War. Yeah. Where did you fight? In France. Which battle? I wrote uh, in Ypres. Uh -huh. Ypres. I'm going to Somme. In the Somme? The Somme? Yeah. In France. Very good. This is a very good present, you know. <laughs> Back on the Isle of Sheppey, the work goes on. You must find that a sheer delight, Alan. Not got a lot to do, have you? I knew there'd be trouble if you weren't fully occupied. <laughs> I knew your gob would be. <laughs> Ooh! Thomas Walsh, master builder, salt of the earth, always there with a ready smile or a witty quip, the proverbial cockney with a heart of gold. Nice chap, if only he wasn't such a constant source of aggravation. Don't lose the key, Alan, or I could be stuck in here for a long time. <laughs> you may live to regret that. Tommy's lost his pulling power. <laughs> <laughs> Promise me something. Off, Promise yeah. me something. Yes. You won't wear the shorts. No, no, shorts are off today. It only makes me eyes water. <laughs> what do you think it does sure. to Well, I've seen you developing a limp lately. <laughs> a limp what? Go on. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that was a low shot. <laughs> Well, that's the first piece in. It's so wonderful to see a skilled workman in action. Where? Ah, Alan, ah, duh, duh, duh. <laughs> It's hard. No, 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 no. <laughs> you must learn to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling all those people out there how old I am. I'll pay Marie. Can you finish up your oldest stories? A bit more paving? <laughs> oh, I just love it when he slaps me on the bum like that. <laughs> Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Tommy Walsh. You like him? <laughs> <laughs> you frame me out! <laughs> One of my most favourite um, scenes was when we were in Spalding in Lincolnshire and I had to make what has become famously known as the spaghetti table. Oh, you you said this table was the right height, did you? <laughs> when you dine at home... <laughs> Please, sir, I want oh, some more. Oh, dear, that's a classic. <laughs> It's very handy, you can flick the food straight into your mouth. It's a spaghetti table, you know, so you don't spill it on yourself. <laughs> they, weren't, going... they weren't needing napkins here. All they have to do is get that under their chin. It's a marvellous invention. <laughs> We've had some thrills and spills on Ground Force, but I have to say the most exciting thing I've ever done is go up on an RAF Hawk jet. It was fantastic, I think. <laughs> Oh, wow. 
We all did some flying, courtesy of Her Majesty's forces, when we went to the Falkland Islands. Before getting stuck into the garden, there was a chance to explore. Combing's good. I bet it is. Gee, look. Charlie can keep her hawk jet. I prefer a flightless bird. Getting this close to these magnificent creatures is what I call exciting. These are king penguins. They're the most brilliantly marked of the lot. These lovely orange bits behind their ears and the orange bill and the orange top of the breast. It, it looks like fur from a distance, and then when you get close to it, you can see they're birds. It's really lots and lots of tiny feathers. And they have this wonderful way <laughs> of walking on their heels. Extraordinary place, the Falkland Islands. Not all the ground force specials have been abroad. In summer 2001, we made one in a corner of a public park in Western Supermare. This garden was to be different in another way, because it was for someone who, in some manner, we all knew. We called it a garden for Jill. Jill Dando was one of the most loved personalities on British television. Two years after she was murdered, we set out to build a memorial garden in her hometown. She started her career as a cub reporter on the local paper, the Western Mercury. Her father still lives in Western Supermare, and it was him we were going to surprise. How the secret was kept, I don't know, because it seemed like most of the town came down to help, as well as various members of the Dando family, there was a crowd from the paper, half the parks department, the town's mayor, plus celebrities. There was even a knight of the realm in on it. A funny item, maybe a funny piece of sculpture. I remember that chaos ensued, but when the surprise was sprung, well, it all worked out. Oh, hello. Hello, Richard. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. How are you? Is yeah. this Tommy? Also, How are you Tommy? Doing, hello, Tommy. Tommy. And Charlie? And Charlie. Hello. hello. And Willie? Oh, yes. Hello, well, I've seen you enough times on oh, the screen. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got a name, Has it? this garden. Yeah, it's called yeah. Jill's Garden. Oh, lovely. And yeah. forget me not's been sown everywhere. Yes. And the paint's all forget me not blue. Oh, yes. Looks as though you've made a lovely job of this. I get a certain little uh, dampness in the corner of my eye sometimes when I, when I watch that show. I've seen it three times because I think it's a marvellous show. I just think it's one, that, one of the most valid that we've done. Jill's Garden, created by BBC One's Ground Force team. Meanwhile, on the Isle of Sheppey, the atmosphere is getting tense. What's Tommy doing? He's having... He's out the front with a man and a van full of tools and he's having a demonstration of what they can all do. <laughs> and there's a pavilion up there which hasn't got a roof finished on it. All the bits are to paint yet. And he's telling me, oh, you won't have time to do the turf, and I suppose I'd better do that. I don't know what with. <laughs> 
is good for a laugh, isn't it, our Tommy? Can you just tell me, because I've been wiping my forehead with my handkerchief, does it say M-U-G over there? <laughs> yeah, them little ones, they're always handy. Oi, we can't move on this patio because this thing's in the way. You see, it's no good pretending that right through these 66 programmes, everything has always been sweetness and light. In the interest of honesty, it's time to take a look at Ground Force, the dark side. I mean, there have been moments. One, two. Can't see any sign of you yet. He's, he's pushing it and, uh, see that, I'll be putting that somewhere in a minute, I'll tell you. <laughs> Don't ask me when it's going to arrive, because I don't know, and I can't do the decking until it arrives, OK? Well, look, I can't. It's not my fault. I can't do the decking if the materials are not here. It's quite simple as that. I thought I'd help with the reel. Fine, OK. Yeah, that's all is right. Is that OK? Yes. Right, now, is this going in level? Yes. Just remember one thing. We're not at home to Mrs Rude. <laughs> oh, s***. Right, guys! Hand sort. Look, you can't do this. It's oh, just right. all, all over here. Well, do it out the front then, if you want to make that kind of mess. Well, what's the point? Is you know, is those in well, all? Well, we're finished. Right? That's all. You either want it done or you don't. You can stop having a wobbly. No, we'll take all listen, this. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, God, it's she. It's what time is it now? Five past four. It's five past four. How long will it be? To tell oh. her when to come back. We'll take you all outside if you don't Stop want to dust. Stop being temperamental and tell me how long you'll be. I don't know how long it's going to be. Can you understand why I'm upset? Yeah. Because it looks it's going to look as though there's snowfall over the entire garden. That's what happens when we have a saw. We can cope with it over there. I cannot cope with it on the finished bit. Unreasonable? No, we'll take it out. How long will it take you then? I don't know how long it's going to take me to do the stairs. Do you want two hours? Do you want me to tell you it'll take two hours? Do you want 15 hours? We'll just get it outside. We'll cut it by and outside. Quarter past five would be good for me. Quarter past five, all right for you too? Yeah, yeah. whenever. It doesn't make no difference to me. Do tempers ever fray on this programme? No, never. It's either done or it ain't done. Much. <laughs> I'll give you a kiss later. Promises, promises. There's one important question. Yeah. You still love me? Are you friends? <laughs> Of course, to come here and look at your face. What about decking? What about decking? You lovely monkey. There you go. Come on. Oh, what's the meant to do? Levitate in midair? There's some of these going up. It's happening domestic every day. And you're not even related to them. You just have to live with them. You get sawdust on my grass. Bit of deja vu with sawdust. Don't come in here, cos I haven't finished my back wall. He hasn't finished his paving, and there's precious little in the way of refreshments. The trouble is, it's some menage a trois here. It's not just those two, it's... The don't you here. start interfering. <laughs> oh, don't you get saucy now. He always has to have the last word. <laughs> Sorry about my tension. No. I think we've kissed and laid out. Oh, have you? I'm very quiet. Tongues? Oh, steady! <laughs> <laughs> In the summer of 2002, as the world approached the first anniversary of the appalling events of September the 11th, Ground Force again went overseas to make a special garden. We came to Manhattan to join forces with the New York Restoration Project, an organisation founded by the actress and singer Bette Midler to turn waste ground into community gardens. The patch we were to tackle was on the Lower East Side. And who's going to be using the garden? This is for the community. I felt that I could really identify with New York once I was there because I come from London, from the east end of London, which is a pretty tough area. And the east side of New York is a pretty tough area as well. But it's full of characters. <laughs> Now, in New York, we had to create a surface that was going to be quick and economical to do. So therefore, I came up with the idea that we could put concrete in and tamper in some gravel into the surface to give a different surface. Now, the concrete originally wasn't supposed to turn up till half past one in the afternoon. Half past eleven, this great big 12 cubic metre concrete truck turned up, full of concrete, with a guy that was about 32 stone and are not a very happy bunny. Now, there are some cardinal rules that you must stick by when working with concrete. 
And the first one is don't spread concrete in hot weather. Number two is don't order the concrete until you're ready. We only got here this morning, we had to shift so much stuff. Number three is make sure you have all the form work down before you actually start laying the concrete. We've got a slight problem. As you can see, the form work's not quite in. We didn't do that either. But what I love about him, once he got in the swing with it, he was a real character, a typical New Yorker. Tommy! Yeah? You got about 10 more minutes, then I'm gonna put the retarder in. That'll give you an hour and a half to play with it after this. Well, just give me five, five more minutes and I'll start spreading it. You got it. Right here. My fiance is going to love this. I called her on the phone to tell her I'm going to be on TV. She went crazy. <laughs> Back to work! Now, with concrete, it goes off very, very quick. And normally you can only have a, a load of lime for about an hour, hour and a half. But Michael, God bless him, he got into the spirit of the whole show. And he kept that, that whole concrete mix alive till four o'clock. One minute to four. You're gonna be able to do it fast? Well, we try. Oh, I don't like that, man. <laughs> don't tell me we'll try. I'm already, right now, I got butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> Can you get us one of them long four by twos? Tommy! Let's go! Can we get the truck in? I'm getting aggravated. Now the Brooklyn's coming out of me. Okay, Tom, let's see. Right, let's get in there. Let's get it done. Let's go, let's go. Get out of the way. I'm out of the way. Looks like we're gonna make it. This is the hardest day I've ever worked in my life. I'm gonna be a star, Vic. I'm gonna be a star. <laughs> if I don't show up Monday, look for me in Hollywood, pal. It was a long slog but we got there just in time for the big surprise. And the victim? Bette Midler herself. Oh, it's fabulous. Hi. Hello. How are you? Right. I've never you? met you. I'm so happy to meet you. What a thrill. Well, thank you. Very Thank speaking you so much. Blanches. That's OK. Hello. Charlie. Hello. Hi. How are you? And Tommy. How do you do? Very nice to and see you. Nice Hello, to meet you. Willie. Very nice to meet you. My goodness, are you I'm so hot? Sorry. Is it hot? Is, is, is it hot enough for you? My God, I almost passed out on the street. Isn't this fabulous? <laughs> Isn't this fabulous? Oh, my God. Oh, it's, oh, it's very pretty. Just as always and everywhere, on the Isle of Sheppey, the clock is ticking. Time must be pushing on a bit. 20 minutes past three. And five o'clock they're arriving? They are. Oh. Hour and a half. I've warned him. I've warned him. Him and that watch of his. If you're working to a deadline, Somebody's got to keep their eye on the time. Quarter to twelve, day one. Quarter to twelve? It's quarter to twelve. Quarter to four, you know. I know it's quarter to four. Excuse me a moment, it's ten to bloody two. Stop looking at your watch, that's my job. And if he pokes his finger at me one more time, I'm going to bite it clean off to the knuckle. The Sheppey Garden is only small, and the weather's been good. But as the deadline approaches, it's turned, like all the rest, into a mad panic. All right. Could you hand me all the bag in here out of that corner down there, please? I can't. I'm going to trim up this side and the back, and then I can force this thing back so I can get round the front of it. I can't trim this one because you haven't got the other side of this lamp. This is ridiculous. It's about to go! 
Joe, try putting this shed on there. What about all this sand? Turn around, let's get... Into the front of the house. Right. If you go to the don't left, run on the lawn. The well, there. don't run on the lawn. lawn. Watch me, lawn. Picture the scene. The garden's finished. The surprisee is returning to the front door. Hello. <laughs> and you've only just finished wiping the sweat off your brow and getting the tools thrown away. You're hiding behind a corner. The first thing goes through your mind: Are they going to like it? Then you go. I wish I'd gone to the toilet. Everything all right? Yeah, it's no, 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 just go right through. You're worried whether they're going to like the garden or not. For me, that's why we're doing it, for the person, not for the TV programme, but for the person to enjoy their garden. Oh, Dad! What's going on, Dad? Mom? Dad, I have a little surprise for you, that's all. You're suddenly stood there, waiting for them to come back. You've never met the person, you've only heard about them. And then you think, well, perhaps these people didn't want their garden changed. Well, I'm so proud of you, but off you go. <laughs> Bloody yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh my god! Oh god! <laughs> oh. When you see a smile on their face and they're really happy about it, that's, that's it. It's all worth it. In the last two days, hard work is worth it. For me, that's what the reveal is about. Hello. Hello! <laughs> you can see the shock on their face. And if they're women, they tend to start crying. If they're men, they start blinking a lot, trying to stop crying. And it, it's terrible, I, being a girly, as soon as you see someone else crying, you start crying. And it, the number of times I've had to blink a lot and go, please don't cry, please don't cry, because it's just the reaction of them. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like it? Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? So the last surprise worked as well as the first, and for that matter, like just about every one in between. Oh no, I can't believe this. <laughs> I've never been kissed by a man before. Oh, my God! You've knackered the gazebo! <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> I think Alan Titch, my look. Good morning. Are you okay? Oh, yes! Yeah. Hi. <laughs> oh, man, this is... Oh, Welcome, Adam. Graham! <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> it's not candy cannon, is it? <laughs> Well, that's it. Time for me to bow out. It's a funny thing, Ground Force, you know. Very simple premise. Take a piece of weed-infested earth and turn it into a garden. But the nicest thing of all is that it seems to have touched people's hearts. Mine included. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs>